O Lord of hosts, be with us, for we have none other help in times of adversity but Thee. O Lord of hosts, have mercy on us. Uh, feminized men are certainly uh, a, a, a interesting and prominent topic that we could all dive into. Now, with uh, with Will Smith, of course, he has been feminized by his wife, and he has been sort of cuckold in the fact that his wife has sexual partners within their open marriage. And, of course, I did a members video on how he ruined his own family due to the lack of traditional masculinity and you know, both of his children are homosexual. I mean, at least bisexual. I consider that basically the same thing. And of course, his wife is also openly bisexual and in an open marriage. Now, Lil Not Sex, I guess, and I have some clips. We're not going to watch it too much, but he had a controversial appearance at the Grammys, uh, the Music Awards. And I couldn't help but notice one of the things just, just walking through L.A., being in L.A., is the feminizing effect on men. We've talked about this over and over and over again, that men are being feminized. Uh, one of the things that I thought would be worthy of a stream topic is how corporations are the major feminizing force. And so a major thesis for tonight's stream is that corporations are the opposite force in our world to the church. What do I mean by that? corporations literally comes from the root Latin word corpse, meaning body. Of course, we as Orthodox Christians, and I'm not going to make any bones about it, I've got some emails from Protestants saying, oh, you know, you're too hard on the, on the non-Orthodox, just become Orthodox. I apologize, but this is, uh, this is how I feel based on my research of church history. So if that offends you, again, uh, God bless you. I hope you continue your journey. But we as the Orthodox Church are the body of Christ. As Christ ascended back into the heavenlies with his Father, of course, Pentecost then brings the Holy Spirit to us through Christ, through Christ, not from Christ, but from the Father, through Christ to the world. This is our Trinitarian understanding. And we then as the church, the church being led, especially through the councils and through, again, scripture and, and uh, our earlier synodal structure before the papacy, we are led by the Holy Spirit. And this is the body of Christ. And so the body of Christ is with us because we eat what we are. We eat the body of Christ and we go to uh, liturgy to be the body of Christ so that we can commune with the body of Christ, which is also in the heavenly sitting at the right hand of the father with a human body, human biological body. This is our religion. This is the theology here. And so we are then the body of Christ. That is a sort of corpus, a sort of corpse, except this body's living. And I, when we start to look at the world, whether it be Nike, whether it be Adidas, whether it be uh, Apple or Google, uh, Pfizer, all the big pharma, all these are corporations and they're corpses, but they're dead bodies. They're bodies that aren't actually living. The body of the church, the body of Christ that you and I belong to is the living body in the world, so much so that it provides eternal life afterwards. And when we look at then the effect that these corporations and this sort of fascistic uh, framework that is clearly underway here in regards to the uh, Great Reset, the New World Order, however you want. And, and then really then the, a deeper red pill goes into looking at the corporatization of governments themselves. I'm not going to dive into your uh, all capitalized name, the the whole stock exchange, birth certificates, all that different stuff. I'll let I'll leave that for another time or your own research. But. Our corporations, the governments themselves are corporations. They're corpses. But these are dead bodies. These are dead uh, bodies that actually feed upon, as what I want to discuss, feed upon our sins. That these dead bodies, these corporations actually feed upon our lust, our gluttony, our greed, our sloth, our wrath, our envy, and of course our pride, the mother of all sins. And so corpses... The corporations are the opposite effect in this world to that of the church. They're in direct oppositional forces here. And so the church brings life. It is a connection back to God. It is the connection back to a transcendent realm that is the a priori, the presuppositional, the, uh, the uh, 
a non-contingent basis for this contingent world. And so the church then brings life while the corporations take us deeper into sin, take us deeper into blindness, and ultimately lead us to death. And we're watching that happen in real time around the world. One of the things I couldn't, uh, it, it was hard for me to just wrap my mind around, you know, I'm in, uh, I'm in central Indiana. When I was in LA, we went to the gym, went to Gold's Gym, uh, walked around, and the amount of people still wearing masks. Again, no, no mandates there anymore. They're still wearing masks. They're literally doing cardio with a mask on two years after. What is going on? on and then at the same time they have their their branded bags their louis vuittons you know the 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 chanel all the, it's like you see the corporations are hands of the evil one they're demonic forces on our society as irenaeus talked about how the holy spirit and christ are two hands of the father right they're two hands of god working in uh inside space and time if you will these corporations are literally dead corpses dragging us further into death itself. And that's why the enemy number one is the traditional masculine man. And that's why it, it was a rare it was a rare occasion to even come across one in uh, in the LA area. So feminizing men, the problem is we are addicted to things that weaken and feminize us. These are, again, things brought to us through the corporations, brought to us through these corpses that run this society, that run this world, that have then have allocated and uh, hoarded wealth to a degree, and then that promotes, not in a meritocratic way, promotes those who then capitulate to the agenda. And we see this with the promotion of, you know, just look at again I don't I don't tend to watch much television but I watched a little college basketball with my family and every commercial is degenerate every single one violates some tor some type of traditional boundary structure and this is the role of men you've heard me talk about this over and over and over again that uh, to use a metaphor men are the castle walls castles being societies being nation states being groups of people and men must be strong both physically and emotionally and spiritually to be those walls around that castle to then protect and provide a space for the feminine, for women, and for children to grow and prosper. Our society has been feminizing men, so those walls, those barriers are slowly becoming further and further decrepit. They're destroying them. They're falling apart. And therefore, forces outside the castle, outside the kingdom, outside the nations can enter in and pillage. They can take the children and they can take the women. And that's what we're seeing with Leah Thomas. Right? We're seeing a man dominate female college swimming in the name of promoting women. What? Huh? I'm confused. How is it that the agenda that is to promote women has in, in turn actually disempowered women? You know, <laughs> the newest Supreme Court nominee doesn't even know what a woman is, but then she claims that she's married to a man, but she's not a biologist, and oh, also she's there to promote women. Uh huh? And then, of course, we know that she's very, very weak on pedophilia. And I'm talking intense pedof pedophilia, cases that would literally, uh, you know, make your skin crawl. So what's going on? We see again, as the castle walls fall, the women and the children are being taken. They're being looted. They're being stolen away. They're being depraved. And this is exactly what we're seeing. And it's being done. It's ushered in through the corporations, which, of course, in this fascistic framework are just uh, fronts for governments themselves, for the World Economic Forum, for whoever, the Bilderbergs, the Davos groups, the, you know, the global elite, whoever it is that you want to put a label to. Corporations through, uh, what is it, the ESG agreements where they promote the environment and then the sexual stuff, the sexual revolution stuff, like they get discounts on their advertisements, which is then why everything is mixed racial couples, homosexuals, and something to do with the green agenda. Because these corporations then, because they themselves are the seven deadly sins, of course we're orthodox, so we don't believe sins are limited 
to the seven deadly ones, but to use that just as a framework, we're talking about lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride, pride being the mother of them all, that corporations, these dead bodies, literally embody all those sins, and then we then get grappled we get grafted into these processes of inversion and we become addicted to things that weaken and feminize us point being porn pornography that and this is something that men and women are struggling with i know and that is a feminizing process to men that is a masculinizing process to women um in so this addiction to sex, this addiction to porn, this addiction to the over-sexual stimulation in our society, it's all affecting us in a negative feedback loop. And it's bringing us, and because we are then become addicted to these things, we get tied back into the corporations and the corporatism that then feeds us back into it. So it's all, again, driving us towards sin, blinding us in our news, the noetic, uh, the noetic apparatus of our own bodies to perceive reality itself. And we dive dirt, uh, further and further towards death. We can look at the drug addiction. We can look at drugs and the, and the, the promotion of, uh, of drugs and the pharmaceutical companies. I mean, my gosh, has it been ever more obvious? You know, I saw that Pfizer, you know, um, Fauci, uh, Fauci's Lord and Savior, that they're coming out with a new alopecia shot uh, a, a stabby uh, uh, a, a jabby jab for alopecia which is the process of losing your hair which has been found i saw an article talking about how it is um that this hair loss uh, process of alopecia has been tied to people who've taken some of the coof uh stabbies and so how ironic then you have the whole thing with will smith and his wife was that orchestrated i don't know it seemed like it but then you have this whole cultural event that then's promoted by all the different networks and all the different things. And at the same time, then she has this side effect that then uh, we believe that hundreds of thousands of people are about to have due to things that they took in the preservation to not die. But the corporations are actually killing you. The corporations are actually killing you. And so we can see this with the brands. You know, this is one of the reasons I refuse to wear brands. I always wear solid colors. You'll never see me wear a logo of any type of company or brand because I'm not a billboard and I don't want to be labeled like cattle or branded with something. And yet we see when we look at our society, people love, love to be branded by an object. Why? Because it's actually a form of submission. It's a form of capitulation. It's a form of being owned by these dead corporations, by these dead corpses, and, and then little Nas X, how he ties into this stuff is he is the full embodiment of where this stuff takes you. He is the transgression of all these boundaries. He is the man in female clothing. He is the homosexual. He is the uh, incredibly flamboyant gay, yet at the same time, he doesn't talk with a lisp. He is the ultra masculine rap guy who then uh, is giving lap dances to Satan. And so... You see how he is the in conclusion where it's not just, yes, we've been affected by our addiction to sex, to women, to all this different stuff, which has then feminized us men. You know, the whole rap culture of going to the strip club and all this different stuff. At least there's a heteronormative element to that. But where this feminizing process takes you, it takes you to the point where you slide down into hell on a stripper pole as a man and you give a lap sexual lap dance to satan that's little not sex that's his music video montero that is it that is the in process that is the inverted man the inverted man is being penetrated by the dead world of that we're fallen in this this corporative world so him being a homosexual and being penetrated by other that's just a metaphor for the inversion that is taking to us all towards same thing with the more so the moral transgressions we've become addicted to this is a weakening and a feminizing process the immediate gratification is a slothful gluttonous feminizing process i saw while i was in california i saw a guy uh who was living we were in a very nice uh very nice area and um, i'm not going to give the specific location but 
Uh, very nice area, well-to-do area, successful people living here. And I saw a guy, probably early 20s, uh, very skinny, lacked any sort of, you know, musculature. Uh, you could tell he, he had glasses on, sort of a, a more nerdy uh, type uh, disposition. And he was walking his dog on one of those, um, they're not a segue, but the, the things that you lean on, somebody type it in the... Uh, Type it in the, the live stream there. The, the little things that you stand on and, and, and you lean forward and it goes forwards and backwards. People turn on them. It was like a big thing a few years ago. But he walked his dog on that. Then he took his dog to his apartment and then he got on it and he went back to his Tesla. And he never got off of it except to get step off of it into the Tesla and take. And I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? This guy can't even get off uh, the hoverboard. Yes, the hover. He couldn't even get off the hoverboard and walk. What the heck? I was blown away. I was blown away. But again, that's a feminizing process. That's a weakening process. That's a consumeristic process that, again, men are being overly consumeristic in the goods, in the products, in the, in the sex addiction, in the brands, in the immediate gratification, which is a feminizing process on us all. And we stop being producers. I saw the latest thing that male fertility has plummeted. And this is due to long coof, but... We already know that there was a, there's been a major problem with testosterone levels uh, well after the 1960s. Again, as the corporatism has developed, as the dead corporations, these dead corpses in our society have feeded upon us through our sinful lust for things, that they have acquired more life power in regards to money, which is really just the exchange of energy and, and value, that then we are ruled by them. Of course we're ruled by them. We're literally in a society that we're ruled by our own sins, i.e. we're ruled by the corporations that give us these sins. Toxic food being another one. We live in a society where we're just trying to get good, clean water without different uh, fluoridated effects, uh, you know, inside the water, uh, hormones in our food, estrogen in everything. You can't even get healthy food anymore. So the food itself is literally putting estrogen into your body. It is literally feminizing you. And therefore, this has led to a society of men who have no responsibility nor want responsibility, which is a feminizing process. Because if we are the castle walls, then our existence by definition is one of responsibility of protecting the women and the children, i.e. Disney and the gay bill coming for the children and Leah Thomas and the transgender. We see the enemy has come for the women and the children and the men aren't there to fight against it. And so the corpses feed off of our sins. I said this again, and we're just using the seven deadly sins. Of course, we're not Catholic. There's way more deadly sins than just these. But lust, how is it that the corporations provide lustful avenues for our, the sin of lust to then be filtered into then an exchange of money and dollars and value? How is it that our gluttony, again, I'm American, and I like the Midwest. I'm from the Midwest. But as soon as I got back, okay, I'll give the devil his due. At least people aren't so fat in LA. At least in California, they're not so fat as they are here in the Midwest. It's gluttony. They're ruled by a different sin. Yes, we don't have as many transgenders. We don't have the, the normalization of pedophilia to the same degree. But my gosh, Look at the weight problem. Look at the dietary problem of the people in this country. And it's global now. You know, obesity is a problem globally. And that's then back tied to the toxic food, which is then tied to the gluttonous disposition of people unable to control themselves. Um, so then that leads to greed. Lust, gluttony, greed. How is it that we ourselves are then ruled by our own greed? This is a way in which these corporate, 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 corporations who then are corpses, how they lure us into these traps to ultimately kill ourselves. That's what we're doing through greed, through sloth. 
right? The Grubhub that, you know, having the food just come, you know, right there to you. You don't have to do anything. There's no exchange. There's no meaning. There's no real meaning in the world because you can get paid nicely to just go along and get along and work for these corporations, these dead corpses in our society that then are extracting value and meaning from our own lives. And in exchange, yeah, you'll get, you know, your six figure uh, deal, you know, working for some tech company, working for some company, you know, wherever it is. And in exchange, yeah, you also live a meaningless life in, a, in an apartment and you can have all your, all the food you want, but you know, good luck finding a, a good relationship. Good luck building a family with your low T rate, to let T oh, with your low T levels. Um, and so real meaning, the real pursuit of adventure, living on the actual edge of your life, the leading edge of your life. This is rare. Most people aren't there. And so they live slothfully, uh, wrathfully, wrath. Think about the whole BLM movement. Think about the whole backlash to George Floyd. This was the corporations literally taking wrath, the, the, the sort of emotional wrath that people had based on what happened and funneling that money then to the BLM corporation, which then where'd all the money go, right? I saw a recent video of people asking uh, BLM supporters, where'd all the money go? Nobody knows, but of course, the, the, the lesbian uh, Marxist leaders, of they have very nice homes now in, in California, Southern California, which is not a cheap place to live. Where did all those hundreds of millions of dollars raised for black lives, where did they go? And we see that it was never about black lives, right? I mean, black, uh, African Americans are the most disempowered from Planned Parenthood. So there's no talk of not aborting black babies. There's no talk again of the food and the crime rates and the education and, and the lack of traditionality, the lack of nuclear families in the black community. No, it's glorifying those problems in the name of BLM to because that's what they're doing to all of us. That's what they're doing to all of us. Envy, pride, of course, the, of course, I mean, envy and pride, I mean, that, getting your brands, you know, wearing your Supreme, wearing, you know, have this thing and that thing. We're all being led by it. So the living dead is the corporations that are around us. These things literally are extracting life force from us to exist. And they're making us, they're feminizing, they're masculinizing the women, they're feminizing the men. And Lil Nas X is a perfect embodiment of where they want to take us. So corporatism is the deadly fascist reality we live in. It's, and, and so here I got this, uh, I'll show you guys wrong. What it's doing is it's actually killing society. It's actually killing people because these corporations, these dead corpses are the opposite of the body of Christ. They're the opposite of the church. That's why only the people in the church, the people part of the body of Christ, the people who are pursuing God are the only ones to be able to see what's going on. It's like they live. If you don't have God, you don't have the glasses to see what's going on right now. You, you, you're, you're, you're totally devoid. And in fact, what you're going to do is you're going to buy into the propaganda, the lies, and you're going to dive further and further and further into the corporatism. And look, this is a woman. This is, this is from April, April 6th, guys. This was two days ago. This woman thinks she's defending Little Nas X and showing how crazy the rest of us are. I, I'm literally going to walk through this article. You're not going to believe what you're seeing. They think we're the crazy ones. I'm not kidding. Okay. Oh, crap. Let me go back. So watch, look at this. Okay. Lil Nas X was called a little fool with zero talent, i.e. the tweet from uh, Greg Kelly, after wearing a crop top at the Grammys, and he's just as confused as the rest of us. Huh. Oh my gosh. I'm just so confused. It's fair to say that Lil Nas X is no stranger to controversy, and over the past year, he has even been accused of being a devil worshiper for his attention-grabbing performance in, in, in music videos. Devil, were, again, it makes us look like we're, no, again, right here, he's literally giving Satan a lap dance. He literally created a shoe called Satan's shoe. He literally promotes satanic activity. Again, watch, I'm just going to go to Lil Nas's, uh, this is his Instagram. This is his Instagram, okay? Literally very gay, wearing all this different stuff, him making out with himself. Here's a, here's a photo right there. All this, it's just like all these naked like photos of himself. 
Here's another one. Like he has tons of this weird stuff. Here's him. Here's in a shower and a music video where he's. So this music video where he's in the pink football stuff, he literally it's disgusting. I'm not. I don't want to look at it. He's literally making out with another dude and and having fornication inside a shower. Disgusting stuff. Absolutely disgusting. And of course, you see Lady Gaga promote him. This is his fake uh, pregnancy photo. So again, uh, you know, a total. <laughs> It's a total inversion. This is the inverted man. This is the demonic activity. This is what these corpses, these corporations literally want to make out of all of us. It's disgusting. And he keeps talking about his baby shower. Give me a break. Oh my gosh. It's, it's disgusting. He has music videos where a bunch of gay dudes dancing in showers. Again, always has the horns. He's always, I mean, it's not that we're making up the demonic stuff. He literally says it. He literally says it. You know, here's his shoe that supposedly one, uh, one, you know, one fraction of 666. Um, again, you have all the. Uh, and said, so he says, I, you live in the dark, boy. I cannot pretend. OK, this is literally him giving Satan a lap dance. Uh, this is literally his shoe. Look again, literally called Satan shoes. Yes, we are the ones. And then this, this is him, right? He, he worships himself. This is himself shooting what an arrow at himself. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. The narcissism, the, the homosexual stuff. It's disgusting. It's literally disgusting. So this is this article, you know, you're crazy. I don't get it. You're a devil worshiper. Like, th no, this is, he's literally open about it. His chart topping single Montero, call me by your name, upset Christians when the music video showed him giving Satan a lap dance following his descent to hell. I don't even want to look at it. You don't think, you don't think that's a little demonic? Like the, the woman who actually wrote this article in defense of him, it blows the mind. You literally read this article. You're like, no, you're literally proving everything that a Christian would say. And shortly after the video dropped, Little Nas X fueled the backlash when he released his 666 pairs of custom Nike Air Max 97s, which he called Satan shoes. At the time, it was reported that they were 1,018 sneakers, and they contained, they all contained a droplet of human blood. They also had Luke 18, 1018 embossed on them which is a reference to the biblical verse where satan falls from heaven some members of conservative religious communities were further outraged by little nas x's saturday night live performance in may which played into the satanic themes already laid out in the video yes again more homosexual activity more gay men more again and now and then he lap he has a lap dance on a i mean it's just disgusting this is disgusting stuff it also included pole dancing and a wardrobe malfunction with Lil Nas X pants splitting midway through the routine but he carried on with the performance like a pro and this one i'm said like guys i imagine you guys watching it's hard to look at that's why i couldn't even make him the main focus i was going to do this whole thing deconstructing Lil Nas it's too disgusting I don't want to look at it. I don't even want to subject you guys to look at it. Um, it's gross. And it's like, because we have those traditional values, when we look at this, we're, it's revolting. It's like, oh my gosh, no, thank you. But it's amazing how many young kids watch his stuff and have no idea. And, and they're like, again, here, if you go to his TikTok, 27.9 million followers what and if you click on the link it takes you to this horrific website where again it's hit it's just what i don't even like looking at the stuff what 26 27.9 million and it's and then it's so, so much oh it's reacting to the snl appearance at the time one twitter user said that the star he already sold his soul to the devil. You see in the video that it's all about the devil. I can't believe people actually listen to this devil worshiper. <laughs> Agreed. I agree. And what was his response? Who cares? I look hot. But Lil Nas X was unbothered by the message, which he retweeted to, to his own social media page and simply added, who cares? I look hot. So again, 
uh, agreeing that he does openly, he is a sort of a Satanist or I guess when somebody tried to ask him about his spirituality, he said that he was an atheist, but now he worships the universe and everything that that implies. One month later, Lil Nas X ruffled feathers again with another live performance, this time at the 2021 BET Awards. Uh, and then I, it just, I don't even want to look at that nasty stuff. I'm going to just, the openly gay musician ended his performance by kissing a male backup dancer on stage. And while Lil Nas X was widely praised for the act, it also sparked fierce anti-gay backlash. No, we don't want kids to see this. It's disgusting. And that's the BET Awards. Again, Black Lives Matter. So in, in the support for black lives, we're going to show you black men kissing each other. Addressing the controversy on social media afterward, Lil Nas X said that it had taken a lot for him to prepare for the performance because he knew that it was unlike anything that ever happened at the awards ceremony before. Just gay. Just look at Let's just all the flamboyancy. Ugh, it took me a lot of time to mentally prepare for this performance while on stage. I was trembling knowing that I was performing something like that in front of my straight peers. Then don't do it. Like, it's just, it's so stupid. It's so over the top and like always a victim of, of, I mean, don't do that stuff. But despite his nerves, Lil Nas X was brimming with confidence after the fact that he, after the fact and had plenty to say in response to the trolls who sent him hateful messages. Seemingly referencing Lil Nas X's Egyptian pharaoh outfit, complete with knee-high boots in the performance, one Twitter, don't use African culture for stuff like this. Respect our ancestors. And then, uh, then he says, y'all really like to pretend homosexuality didn't exist in African culture. Whatever. So now that's it. I'm not going to read the rest of this stuff. It's just too much. We're going to move on. But um, you see him wearing a dress here. Um, see, and then Lil Nas X was characteristically dismissive. So this one says, I'm sure he was paid a million dollars to wear this nonsense. This will cause other little boys that admire him to dress this way for free. And I hate seeing men emasculated. This wrote one black man on Twitter. And of course, Lil Nas X replies, we causing the emasculation of all men 2021 devil face cold face 100 so then he's literally open about his agenda to emasculate young boys literally open to it i mean look his the the, the, the stuff i mean it's openly demonic like look at this clearly that is has like a demonic tinge to it and all this all it, it so there, there's just homosexual demonic stuff everywhere and then look at the influence. 12.3 million followers on, on Instagram. 27.9 million on TikTok. I mean, tons of young people watch this stuff. And so he's open. Yeah, he's definitely emasculating the youth. So looking at his track record, it's unsurprising that there is plenty of excitement when it was announced that Lil Nas X would be performing at this year's Grammys, which took place on Sunday. And of course, who do you see? Um... Lil Gaga, another, you know, another participator in uh, Maria Abrahamovich's um, spirit cooking. So we see another person that's certainly tied to this cult and given little kissy faces with uh, Lil Nas X, the star who was nominated for five awards, took the stage. Well, yeah, whatever. This is what he wore again, a, a butterfly. It's just we're not going to we're not going to see too much. of this. It's just it's too much too much uh his his followers were living for the sassy response which was retweeted thousands of times and received over half a million likes um it, it's disgusting so i uh, we're going to be done with that